Hello, this is Linda from Green Bay Botanical Garden here to talk to you today about vermicomposting. You may have recently heard about composting from my friend Kelly, and today we're taking it a step further to talk about composting with worms. So inside this bin here, I have hundreds of worms, lots of food scraps, and more. So let's dive on in and see what it looks like. Here's the inside of our worm bin. Now it might look a little bit like a hot mess, but this is exactly what we want. Besides the worms, which are buried deep down underneath all of this, we also have food scraps. We gotta give them some food to eat. So they like our old banana peels, our orange peelings, even old pieces of paper towel they'll eat. And we'll talk more about the foods that they love a little bit later. Now these worms, let me show them to you. Our best ones are these little red wigglers here. Using earthworms or something that you find in your garden might not be the best unless you know that they are red wigglers because these like to eat a lot and then they make more babies to eat even more and they are really wonderful for turning our food scraps into compost. Now what is this compost we talk about? Down in here you're seeing all this brown gooey stuff and this is golden. This is what's left after those worms. They eat our scraps. They take the nutrients they need and then they poop out the rest. And in this worm poop, also known as worm castings, there's all kinds of great nutrients, including iron and calcium and nitrogen for our plants. So then this can be put onto our plants, mixed in with our soil, and it won't hurt our plants and it will help them grow to be big and strong. Now to make a compost bin at home, it's pretty easy. So let's take a look at everything that you'll need. When you make a vermicompost bin at home, you'll need just a few things. First, you'll have to decide what type of container you would like to use. You can use plastic ones like you see here, otherwise wood and metal are good options. You can choose to use a container that you may already have at home or to buy one new. We chose to get our bin from Worm Away down in Kalamazoo, Michigan. This is a commercial composting bin, but if you use one at home, there are a few things you'll still have to keep in mind. You do want to make sure that there are air holes and some ventilation for our worms. So you'll see this bin has them on top and some along the sides here. Because our worms, they do need to breathe just like we do. And the air circulation helps to make sure that the composting process in here doesn't get too smelly. For the size of the bin, typically a two foot by three foot bin, as we have here, is good for a family of about three to six. You want around a square foot for each person in the household. You also want to make sure that it's not too deep because your worms, they're not going to be moving up and down too much in the compost. They like to stay kind of lower down and so you want to make sure that you're able to reach in there easy enough as well. So about a foot to a foot and a half is deep enough for a container. And then next, in our new container, before we put our worms in, we need to provide them with some bedding. We need to give them a nice home to live in. So the best thing to use for that is shredded paper. And if you don't have paper that's shredded by a shredder, you can use any type of scrap paper you have at home and just make sure you're tearing it up in smaller pieces. It's better to use uh, white scrap paper or newspaper versus colored, um, but a little bit of colored in there and some ink isn't really gonna hurt your worms either as most inks are plant-based. So our, we've got our bedding, but before we put it into our bin, we do wanna make sure to get it wet. This is about a pound of paper here, and for every pound of paper, you'll want two cups of water. And so we'll just pour this right on top here, and then mix it in, because our worms, just again like us, they need water to survive. And worms actually breathe through their skin, and to be able to do that, their skin needs to be moist. So we'll wanna make sure that our shredded paper gets wet. Now it doesn't need to be dripping, but we do want uh, all of that paper to be damp. When you're mixing it, you will get some clumps in there. You'll wanna make sure to break those apart as you're going along. And then the last thing before you put your worms into your bin is to add some food. So we took a look a little bit at the food that we had in the bin. We had some banana peels, oranges, even some paper towel, because again, paper towel, it's paper made from trees, so that's a plant material. Worms are gonna love anything that's made from plants. So we've got some leftover chives here. We've got a tea bay, because our tea, again, made out of leaves, typically. 
those tea bags you can toss right in, even the little paper tag that's on it. If you've got your leftover coffee in the morning, coffee that's made out of beans. And then next are eggshells. Eggshells are a great source of calcium for our worms. So you're gonna wanna break them up a bit more, it just makes it a little bit easier for those worms to eat. And then next I've got here a piece of peanut butter toast left over from my little guy this morning that he didn't wanna finish. So just about anything that's left on your plate can also be put into the worm bin with a few exceptions. Now, we don't wanna to put too much meat into our worm bin. The worms, they'll eat it, but the meat, that can cause some smells that we might not want sitting in our house. And then cheeses and dairy don't do the best in there either. So stick to those plant-based things that you're eating um, and those scraps from your table as well that go into your worm bin. And now I'm gonna take a look inside and we'll show you how to put this all together. Once you have your container and your bedding all prepared, it's time to put it together. You'll notice we're using the bin that we saw earlier, so I'm just preparing half the side as you would uh, for the whole bin when you're starting off new. So first you'll wanna spread out your paper, make sure that you've uh, again taken out any of those clumps, and if there's a few clumps in there, that's okay, but try to make it nice and fluffy and airy for these worms. Next, you're gonna take your food scraps. Remember those eggshells we're gonna crunch up. Got our tea bag here, that piece of toast, my banana peel, and then we wanna take some more bedding and put that on top of these foods because our worms, they prefer dark, damp places, and so they're gonna to wanna to eat within that bedding if possible. So get those covered up there as best you can. And then we're also going to add in a handful or two of soil as well, that just helps to promote the environment for our worms. Soil, or in our case, I already have some worm castings here, we'll add those in. And now our container is all ready to accept our food scraps and make some wonderful compost for our plants. Now that your container is all ready to go, you can add your worms and then add your food scraps throughout the week. The best place to store your container is in an area that stays about mid 50s to mid 70s in terms of degrees. A basement or a heated garage is good for that. And then after a few months, your compost will be ready and we'll provide you more information about how to harvest that compost and then add it in with your soil and add it to your plants to have beautiful, happy plants. Thank you so much for joining us today and for more gardening tips and tricks, visit Green Bay Botanical Gardens website at gbbg.org or visit us on Facebook. Thanks so much and we'll see you again soon.